longer the llama. <laughs> so I just made a great video, but never pressed the record button the entire time. So basically, uh, we're trying to find our way to the airport to find Enterprise to see what I should do with my rental car that has a light pull through the windshield. Because uh, I'd love to stay at the hotel tonight if we could. They supposedly have generator power they're on and real bad. So that would be somewhat nice, but uh, basically this entire island has been devastated. They recently started a process where any power pole that went down, they would replace the wooden pole with a uh, metal power pole. So, uh, or concrete power pole. So, a lot of these poles you see that are actually up are, are the replacement ones. But looking around, you still see that even some of those are, are, land, are slanted. And a few, quite a few have fallen. There's uprooted trees all over the place down here. There's roof blown off. Uh, windows and homes are completely gone. Uh, there was massive flooding. People are having. So just gonna kind of just gonna kind of run the the camera as we we drive through town here. Watch those power lines there. Uh, oh yeah, all this, all this stuff. These are all the flagpoles. Those are all of the flagpoles bent down. They flew the American flag, the POW flag, the Northern Marianas flag. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is our drive here, trying to head to the airport. You can see a few cars are out, people trying to kind of triage their issues and, and try to get help to family members and help to, to others. And I've heard quite a few of the of the stores are, are opening or <clears throat> oh all their windows They're are open. busted out. That's <laughs> They're open. <laughs> <laughs> They're open. <laughs> it's because they have no windows anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is it's quite quite the quite the problem. Those all those walls are caving in. All these trees are all blown down. Uh, Stoplights, of course, are all out. Turn, treat everything as a four-way, technically. Wow, this is crazy. So we, we've been told that the, and we've seen some pictures that the domestic side of the entire airport is is trashed. But the car rental is directly across from the international. Um, these are all those brand new, like concrete poles that are all completely fallen down. One of these days they're going to realize there's an investment in trenching underground cabling. But until then, this is what it looks like. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's starting to rain again. Yeah, just follow the guys in front of us. Looks like the other side's trying to get over because they're trying to cut up those telephone poles. And get them out of the road at least. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be months before you guys have power again because there's no way they're gonna get all these poles reinstalled. Yeah, their house is gone, just completely gone. We know people that have had their houses flooded. We were talking to a few of their, their houses, knee deep water. These are all just power lines down everywhere. Um, as we look up this hill, just going up this entire hill on the left side, all of the power lines are down, every single one of them. They're out here with chainsaws cutting the telephone poles in half so that way they can get the telephone poles out of the middle of the road. But there's still like wires draped across the road where the lines connected so I'm assuming they're just cutting them I, I don't know but it, they're gonna be out here for for weeks months trying to restore power and it's not like your typical East Coast uh, hurricane that comes through where you get linemen that come in from all over the country to help out these guys have kind of they've kind of kind of figured it out themselves I mean yeah FEMA will probably send some assistance in but you wonder how much is really going to show up. Guam will come over and help, probably, but they had their own issues as well. This is crazy. Fences torn down, just sheet metal everywhere. 
That house is completely caved in. The roof's gone on this one. Wow. These are just more power lines just dangling. All the, the trees have been stripped. Uh, there's not a single coconut in a tree left. It turned into 15 pound projectiles. It's more and more people out. Everybody's going to the supermarkets. Yeah, it's flooded here. Rain's starting to pick up a bit. Those of you that have been to Saipan, you'll notice this massive blue church in front of us. You turn right there to go to the airport. It's a notorious landmark. Jotun uh, Supermarket's open. The Danden Supermarket. I believe all the Jotuns opened up at uh, 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, it's 5 o'clock right now. 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday. Uh, so we've been locked in uh, at the communications building for uh, a day and a half, day and a half, two days now. Um, so this is our first venture out. Again, for those that saw the pictures on my Facebook and Instagram account, um, there's a light pole that is smashed into the front windshield of my rental car right now. So thankfully we got the uh, additional insurance, but I don't know how to get another rental car. And of course, as you can see with all the power lines being down, there's no phone communication. Of course, all the phone numbers on the Enterprise website and everything like that is landline numbers. So I don't have a, a cell phone number or anything like that. So we're we're trying to venture over to the airport here and see if the Enterprise, if there's anyone there, if they have any cars, if there's oh. any telephone poles in the middle of the road. Um, this is absolutely nuts. Follow that red car. You see, it's weird because mainland, if there's power lines down, you don't draw the road because usually they're live power lines. Here, as of 10 p.m. night before last, they shut off power to the entire island. So the only way you had power is if you had your own standalone generator. So I guess the good part of that is none of these power lines are live right now. Um, so there's not as, as big of a concern of driving around them and cutting them up and kind of getting them all out of the way. How long it'll take to restore this, I, I can't fathom to, a, to take a guess. But uh, multiple people, uh, there, there's, there's quite a bit of, yeah, mostly roads, most main roads here are paved, but then they have dirt roads that leave off kind of your driveways back in, into neighborhoods and stuff like that. And just looking at the, uh, I'm assuming he's waiting on somebody coming the other direction. Okay. Looking at the, some images people have, have taken walking out the end of their driveways and whatnot, they have where the water just created gullies and ravines in their driveways uh, in the gravel and they have like two foot deep trenches <laughs> in their driveway so it's one of those they're gonna have to uh, smooth that out get a get a backhoe in there or a small bobcat or i guess you can do it by hand and try to smooth those out before they will be able to get in and out of their own driveways so it's gonna be a it's an interesting time i guess uh we were hearing that Sol Sol Solador, Solador, whatever that was Solador. called, Solador. Um, the airport wasn't open for like two to three weeks after that came through. Um, this one they're saying is massively stronger than that one, so we don't really have any idea when the airport's supposed to reopen. I, I think they're still trying to figure out what all's wrong. We saw pictures of the domestic side. Basically, the, all the front windows blew out, all the ceiling tiles caved in, uh, standing water. Uh, kind of all that good stuff. The the ramps that the planes would pull up to that you would uh, board and disembark from the airplane, those were trashed. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, I don't know what the, the time frame is on the airport reopening. Um, there's some people we know that aren't currently here. They're in Guam right now. They, they, they kind of have business dealings on both sides of Guam and Saipan. So they headed there and they, they can't get out. You just want to make sure you keep moving. Don't stop. Um, yeah, I'm doing a little four wheel in here.
Come on, car. Don't stop in front of us. I see what he's doing. He's trying to straddle more on the concrete. The worst part about this is this is the road to the airport. So once we get in here, we have to turn around and come back out of here. Maybe we could try to use the other way. There's another way? Yeah. There's a back way. There's three ways. There's three ways. This, that, and there. Oh, this, that, and there. Yeah, There's definitely a very technical <laughs> term. <laughs> Everyone on my Facebook is going to read that room and they're going to be Sorry. like, this, that, and there. <laughs> Wonderful instructions. <laughs> you guys need a tour guide. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not live on Facebook because I figured there was really no point because it's 3 o'clock in the morning back on the East Coast time. So nobody would watch it. So <laughs> just watch that. There's a cable right above us right here. Yeah. And then we're going to have to limbo under that one, over this one. This is absolutely sad. Devastating. It's yeah, it's I mean people's livelihoods and stuff. It's they they, they work hard, they they, they have a, a place that they're proud of and they've worked on and gardens and trees and all that kind of stuff and something that that quick, an eighteen hour time frame, it's completely destroyed. And it'll it'll probably be years before a lot of this stuff's mm -hmm. back to the way it was before the storm came through. We, we have a there's a shipping container near the building we're at that, that slid across off the piling slid across the road and took out like 15 cars at the police station just just smashed into their smashed into their hoods and everything um where we were parked i think there was only like maybe two three cars that went unscathed everyone else either had broken windshields broken back windows um puncture holes in the sides where roofs came flying at them it's just so it's out of the 15 cars that were parked there all but two um, have damage that most of them are undrivable. So we, we don't really know if we can get back to the airport, even what the, the status of the rental cars will be out here. I'm just hoping because I'm still here for a week and a half, we can find a vehicle because we're paying for a rental car that has a light pole smashed into its hood right now. Uh -huh. That looks like the police or FEMA or somebody right there. No, that, I think that's from the airport. Oh, it's airport Port's authority. Hmm. Yeah, it's oh, Port's. yeah, Port's authority. Let's make sure nobody's smuggling anything in right now. Duck under. left, yeah, duck left. Okay. Go under and over. Oh. This is just devastating. So yeah, I'm going to do the typical, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave your questions down below in the comment section. Uh, it's, not, it's not a true video unless you, you tell everyone that. I really don't care if you do any of those. Uh, I'll make this thing public, so by all means, share it out. Uh, this is the remnants of the Super Typhoon U2 Category 5 here on uh, Saipan. Again, we're trying to drive to the airport so we can see what the status is of the rental car company. There's a couple uh, couple other rental car companies here on the island. Uh, there's So funny enough, this has got a massive tourist population, and for some reason, they believe that all mainland Americans drive pink Mustangs uh, convertibles that's all we drive and there's a few pink Hummers so there you get around the touristy area of town and there are numerous rental car companies and all they rent all these pink Mustangs so I was contemplating just going to another rental car place and picking up a car just to have something to, to get back and forth to work in the hotel and food and that kind of stuff but because the taxi I mean, we even try calling taxis their cars are shot uh, there's no taxis going so um, the problem with that is I'm still paying for an uh, Enterprise car that's got a, a light pole sticking out of its windshield. And I actually got the insurance, so I'm, I'm here for a work trip. So I've got the insurance on the car, so I mean there's just a, a deductible got to pay and then everything else is covered, but 
I'm trying to get another car because I'm still paying, of course, daily for, for that car. And if it's just, it's, uh, we've been trying for a good 12, 14 hours to try to reach somebody to find out where we could go and just grab another car. I, I don't care ultimately what condition it's in as long as the windows aren't smashed out. Um, I, I don't care about a missing bumper or any of that kind of stuff because right now we've got a smashed in front windshield with a light pole sticking out of it. So it's not too drivable and it gets a little uh, gets a little rainy, a little breezy at times. So we haven't of course tried driving it, but we haven't even attempted to pull the light pole out yet because I don't really know what the protocol enterprise is or wants as far as damage to it. Um, we took pictures, of course, um, but we don't know if they actually want to see it, if they want to tow it, if well, what they want to do. I, I don't want to drive it up here because, of course, um, there's a hole in the windshield, like right at eye level for the driver. Um, so this is uh, this is the International Airport. Um, 